Hi everyone. For those of you whom I have not met yet, my name is Amy Lebanoff and I'm one of your TAs for the measurements course. This video is going to be about creating a virtual instrument in LabVIEW or a VI. This is specifically for Lab 2, but a lot of the things we learn you'll be able to use for future labs as well. The first thing you're going to do is open up LabVIEW and then click blank VI. And it's going to open up two windows. You can place these how you like, but most of the time I put the white one, which is block diagram, over on the left. And then the other one is the gray panel, and it's called the front panel. This is just for logical structuring. The left side is going to be where we build the application. We're going to put blocks together, wire them together to tell the program what to do. And then on the right is the output. So it's just like reading from left to right. So the first thing you're going to do is right click on the block diagram and then go down to express. That's going to be one that we use a lot. Go to input and simulate signal. You're going to click and drag that and place it on the block diagram. In a normal lab, we would have something called a function or a signal generator that creates the signals like sine waves or square waves, or we would have a power source that creates a DC or direct current. But in this case, we just have the laptop or computer with LabVIEW. So we have to create the signal, which is what this simulate signal block does, and then the rest of the program will be what collects and analyzes the signal. There are a few things we need to change in here. The first one is clicking the drop down and changing sign to DC. And we're going to leave offset at zero, but if you want, you can play with that and see what happens. So if we type in one, we see that this Y axis shifts to have the direct current at one instead of zero, but we want it to stay at zero. We're going to check the box that next to add noise. And we're going to change the noise amplitude to 0 0.05. So what this simulates is experimental variation. In an actual lab, you wouldn't have a current that's perfectly at zero all the time. You would have it varying slightly between different values. And that's what this add noise checkbox does. The next thing we're going to change is in this timing section down here at samples per second, we're going to leave that at 1000 Hertz, meaning 1000 samples per second are being collected. Then we're going to uncheck the automatic box and change this to 2001. The reason for this is we want to collect two seconds of data. So if it's 1,000 samples for each second, then we multiply that by two and we get 2,000 samples, meaning it's two seconds of data collected. But we have to add the one because the first sample that is collected is at time equals zero, which means if you only collect 2,000 samples, then you have 1.9999 and so on seconds of data. But if we want the full two seconds, then we have to add that one there. We're also going to change this setting. We're going to switch to simulate acquisition timing, meaning if you are collecting 10 seconds of data, then it'll take 10 seconds to complete rather than being done immediately. And that's just to make the experience a little bit more realistic. Then you hit OK. The next thing we're going to do is create a visual. So right now, all we've done is create this behind the scenes simulation of a signal, but we want to see the output of what that creates. For this, you're going to right click on the DC with uniform noise. When you hold the mouse over something, it'll tell you what that is a lot of the time. In this case, this is an output. So we're gonna right click and go down to create and then graph indicator. And it will automatically wire together the graph, which is this part here, and the signal simulation. And this is what you call a wire. So if you look over on the front panel, you should have a graph there now, and you can reposition it by clicking and dragging, or you can resize it if you like. Next, we want to add some calculations for the data that we're collecting. We're going to right click on the block diagram, go down to mathematics, then prob and stat, meaning probability and statistics, and then you're going to select the standard deviation and variance block. Go ahead and click that and then place it wherever you like in the block diagram. As you work more with LabVIEW, you'll figure out what makes sense and where to put things in LabVIEW. But for now, you can just follow along with the placement that I have. So when you have a block, you'll have inputs and outputs. Most of the time, the inputs are going to be on the left. So here we have two inputs. One is X, and then the other one is weighting sample. And the outputs are mean, standard deviation, and variance. We're going to connect our X input to our raw data. So those are going to be considered the x values. And then we're going to hover over mean, right click, 
and then click Create Indicator. You'll see that this creates something over on the front panel. It might be in a different position, but it'll be the same thing. So this has created a mean indicator that's going to show us what the mean value of all of our data is. And then you're also going to right click on the standard deviation output and click Create Indicator as well. So now we have two indicators, one for the mean and one for standard deviation. Again, you can move those around wherever you like. Something that we want to change for these is the number of decimals it displays. Right now it's only showing two decimal points, but we want it to be a little bit more precise than that. So you're going to right click, go to display format, and then where it has a percent 0.2F for floating, we're going to change that to 0 0.5. So that's going to change from two decimal points to five. Same thing for mean, right click, go down to display format, and change the 2 to 5. And then you can expand the box if you need to to show all those decimals. Next we want to create a histogram as another way to visualize our data. So this is going to be a direct readout on the graph of the raw data, but a histogram gives us a different way of visualizing it. Over on the block diagram we're going to right click, go down to mathematics, prob and stat again, and then there's three different histograms. You'll notice there's one that says just histogram, there's one right next to it saying gen histogram, and then over on the bottom right, a blue and red histogram. The one that we want to use is the yellow and white histogram. So click that and then drag it over to your block diagram. Again, you'll see it has multiple inputs and outputs. It has an X input, which we're going to wire to our raw data. The second input it has is intervals which is going to let you tell the histogram how many intervals to create. For that, we're going to use another block called Formula. You're going to right-click, go down to Express, Arithmetics and Comparison, and then Formula. And this is where you're going to enter the formula that you'll find on your handout. That formula is 1.87 times using the asterisk, and then in parentheses, n minus 1, close parentheses, and to the power of 0 0.4, and then add one at the end. One thing you'll notice here is instead of using a caret like you would normally do for an exponent, I've used two asterisks, which is just the lab view syntax that you have to use. So make sure you're using this notation, otherwise it won't work. Another thing you have to change is making x1 into n. So right now you'll see over on the right it says invalid formula, and that's because lab view doesn't know what this capital N is. But once we change x1 to capital N, it changes to a green box, which means you have entered a valid formula. You're going to click OK. And now we have to tell it what value to use for N. Otherwise, it doesn't have a number to calculate with. So we're going to hover over the input for N, right click, and then create control. If you want, you can rename this as number of samples, just so it's a little bit clearer what you're working with. And you'll notice that that pops up over on the front panel as well. For now, we're going to change the value to 2001, just like we made it in the simulate signal box. And you'll want to make sure that these two numbers always match. So over here, number of samples 2001, and in our front panel, 2001. Anytime you change the number of samples in either of those spots, you need to make sure to change it in the other spot as well. Now that we've calculated the number of intervals, we need to connect that from the formula box. So hover over result and then click and connect it to the input on intervals of histogram. So once you have that connected, you'll want to actually visualize the histogram. We have all the behind the scenes calculations, but we want to see what the result is. Hover over histogram graph, right click, and then create indicator and that will automatically wire together the histogram graph. You'll see it show up over on the front panel, and again, you can resize and position that as you like. Next, we're gonna need a way to save our data for later analysis. We want to save five different parts of this, but we can only do that if they're merged together in one signal. So for that, we're gonna need a merger, which you're gonna find by right-clicking, go down to Express, and then Signal Manipulation, and at the top left is Merge Signals. When you place this in the block diagram, you'll notice that there are only two inputs, but we need five. 
So at the bottom, there's a little blue box that you can click and drag down to expand it until there are five inputs. And again, there's still going to be one output because they're all being combined into one signal. It's important that you pay attention to which piece of data you put into which input because it's not going to label them once it saves it in the file. So if you follow along with this, we're going to do our raw data as the first input. Second is mean, and I would go straight from the source rather than clicking on the wire. Both will work, but it gets a little bit confusing which wire is which, so just go straight from the source. Third is standard deviation. Fourth comes from the histogram, x values. And then last, we have the h of x values from the histogram. That's also the y values. Next, we are going to right click, go down to express, output, write to measurements file. So this is what's going to be the thing that actually saves our data. At the top left is where you can select the location that the file saves to. We'll put this in here. And then you can change the file name. We'll just call this test. Next, you want to make sure you select use next available file name. Otherwise, it will just overwrite your test and you'll only have one trial saved. So if you keep it on the rename existing file, then it just keep overwriting the same file and not creating new ones for each trial. But this selection, use next available file name, will add a number to the end of the test. So it'll be test, test one, test two, and so on. We also want to change x value columns to one column only. And once you've changed that, you can hit OK. Make sure you wire together the output of your combined signal into the input of write to measurements file, otherwise it won't be saving anything. One more feature we can add is being able to control whether or not the data is saved. Because sometimes you'll just want to do test runs and you won't need to save the data, and then other times you want to actually record the trial that you're doing. So click at the bottom of Write to Measurement File and drag down until you see Enable. And then right click on the input of that and click Create Control. You'll see over on the front panel, this button has popped up. And you can resize that. And then you can also change what it says here. So I'm going to make this Save Data. And then you click it. And that's the other option. Don't save data. And that's all of the features that you need for most of the lab. So we'll test run this with our DC signal. And that's what it should look like. Now if we change this as the lab handout has you do, we change it to sign. You'll see the preview over in this window. And there's some more settings that you can change. The handout will tell you all the details on what you need to set it to. And we'll see what that looks like. So that's just a sample of some of the things that the lab handout has you doing. You can change the numbers in the axes of your graph so you can see it closer or further away. Once you're done with acquiring the direct current, sine wave, and square wave, you're going to switch to a helicopter noise which is going to be produced either from your phone or from the same device running LabVIEW. For that, we're going to actually delete this simulate signal because the signal is coming from your phone or laptop. So go ahead and delete that. And then right click, go down to graphics and sound, and then sound and input. Here you're going to find acquire. Click and drag that to your block diagram. Now this is really important. Make sure under number of channels, you change that to one. And then also make sure you have the correct microphone selected. So if you have multiple microphones like a webcam or a gaming headset or something and you wanna use those, then go for it. But make sure you have the right one selected. Then hit okay. And then wire together from the output of data to the wire that simulate signal was previously connected to. And the rest of the VI should work just fine. Also remember that when you change the sampling frequency to 15,000 for the helicopter sound, you're going to need to change this number of samples. So if you're sampling at 15,000 samples per second and you want 2 seconds of data, multiply the 15,000 by 2 to get 30,000 and then again add that 1. So it's going to be 30001. Feel free to reach out to me or your lab TA with any questions. Good luck!